Being the first means he wants his work to last. I'm considered the pioneer of the mural movement here in Colorado. Before Emmanuel Martinez painted sculptures, he was painting walls around West Denver 50 years ago in neighborhoods full of Chicano families. Murals is probably the most, in my opinion, the most dynamic form of art. I mean, it's monumental in size, it, and it belongs to everybody. But the stories belong to his people. The educational system has failed us there. They don't, uh, they don't teach our history. In places like what's now called La Alma Park, Martinez created images depicting the evolution of Chicano heritage in Colorado. I, I wanted to, 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 to uh, paint murals, you know, that uh, inspired pride in, in our culture. He wanted all this to be a part of the city forever. Like the mural under the Spear Boulevard viaduct near Elitch Gardens. It's the largest mural in Denver. It's approximately 10,000 square feet. But the reality is, Father Time and Mother Nature always win. This is really where the, the mural movement began in Colorado. But now they face father, daughter. So they painted murals. I am so proud of my daughter, uh, Lucha, for, for doing this. The visual legacy of Colorado. Lucha Martinez de Luna is trying to protect her father's work and the work of other artists. This mural essentially really describes our heritage and our sense of place. She in runs the Colorado. Chicano Chicana Murals of Colorado project. Why do we don't have any spaces here? Why Offering tours to community members to create awareness of the growing need to restore these neighborhood murals. People of color didn't have access to their history. They were not taught that in the schools. We were not represented in cultural institutions, in museums. So these murals became our historical textbooks. A lot of these murals, when she was just a little girl, she used to help paint them. So uh, she's been around mural, mural painting all her yeah, life. There's cracks. But over the decades, the walls begin to crumble. The paint starts peeling off. Essentially, they have to come in and take off some of the paint, fix the surface, and then repaint that. And the advantage that we have is a lot of these artists are still alive, so they could actually come and restore it. Restore is one thing, but how about resurrect? Most of my murals have been wiped out, and a lot of it is due to gentrification. New buildings go in replacing the old ones. New owners come in, literally whitewashing history. But somebody bought the building and just painted it all white. In places like this building at 9th and Bryant. It was 350 feet long by 16 feet high. We do all this work and, and for what? You know, for someone to just come in and wipe them out. Now, the Murals of Colorado Project will try to remove the white paint and bring back the original images. The murals really are a smaller part of a social issue that we have, and, and that is still systemic racism, is when these properties become um, desirable, then we're, we're dispensable. So they're trying to change minds and help people understand murals are just not a part of the past, they're a part of Colorado. But it feels different this time. It really, really feels like there's a chance that we can protect these murals. We just want to save the murals because so a lot of people that move in just don't really appreciate them, don't know what the history is, and they don't even bother to ask. The answers can be found in the writing on the wall. In Denver, Nelson Garcia, 9 News.